Hey guys, this is your daily horoscope and energy reading for August 2nd, Sunday, and okay, so we've had a flying high kind of week, and I've really been energized by telling you what I feel. I have felt personal power. I have felt um, progression. I have felt insp inspiring energy. Um... It's been a glorious week to talk about for me. Yes, I feel opposition and I feel strain and I, I feel some of those things, but I feel that is for a minority of you. Um, I feel that most of you have been working diligently and very hard at at the awakening that you have experienced and so that the majority of you have experienced loss or some sort of traumatic event or some awakening experience that has made you turn to astrology and 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 seek guidance and then try to find some way to interpret it and to move forward in a very um, progressive fashion not fall into poor coping methods so I I feel for a lot of you this week was an inspiring week if you if you felt this this week just handed you your butt then that just means that for some of you, you still have some areas to tweak and fine tune, and that is what Venus in retrograde does. I want you to understand something. When Venus goes into retrograde, it's not only about how others see you. They mirror who you are. So let's say that you don't value yourself enough to seek a um, healthy relationship. And so you you constantly surround yourself with very toxic relationships. And and you fall into very, um, let's, let's say that you, every time you have a relationship, you have a relationship with a narcissist. And so um, at some point you have to point the finger at yourself and say, well, why do I seek these narcissists? What in it? in me wants to believe words over actions, you know, wants to, you know, hide from facts versus fiction, you know, you know, it, it's hard to face the mirror sometimes, and others are where we fall. So where you have your rising sign, um, I like to tell you guys it, where your seventh house is, is where you fall. It's where you it's, it, it's, it's where you see your deficiencies, and that's what Venus retrograde pulls out in a magnitude. It's not a slow, gradual step. We have all these karmic relationships, and through these karmic relationships, we find where our deficiencies lie. It, 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 it's not like that. It speeds up the process when Venus goes into retrograde, especially when it goes retrograde into like a Virgo energy or a Leo-based energy. When it's in a, that Virgo-based energy, it wants to see where your mental well-being is and where your physical well-being, where you fall in those areas. But when it gets into Leo, it's more about where you fall in how you value yourself in relationships. How are, authentic are you in your relationships? Do you, are you a mutable person? Are you like clay, right? Um, many signs are like clay. Um, Virgo, Gemini, um, Pisces signs, um, and Sagittarius. They're all mutable signs. They're all like they 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 mute them they mutate themselves into a ball of clay and match their environments. For those energies, normally if you have those in your rising if you have them in your sun or if you have them in your moon, you have a tendency to mold yourself into your partnerships, into what they want you to be. And if that's your case, then you have no identity of your own and you sometimes get lost in these relationships. And at first you are caught up in serving them, feeling their needs and, and feeling your worthiness through filling their needs. But at some point, you'll find that these relationships are very short-lived because, you know, they stop filling you. It's like at some point, you don't want to fill all of their needs. You want to have some of your needs filled. And um, I also want to say that if you have your where your north and south nodes are, are placed, where your Venus is placed as well, it's very important for you to know. If you have these immutable energies, you're going to find that you want to become that clay and mute 
dictate to whatever you you are um, involved in in your relationships, unions, partnerships, work relationships, anything that is a day to day routine, you'll just get lost in it and then eventually resent it and then eventually it will depreciate and you will end that relationship quite suddenly um, because y you know that at some point you've lost yourself but you don't understand who you even are so that was your Virgo and Venus transit and then it fell back into Leo um, this week and so you've learned a lot about what you authentically desire you know <sighs> What others see as a 10 relationship, you may find as a five. And, and you may be surprised that if you flip back into your past, you know that person that really made you feel authentic? You didn't have to hide who you were. You could admit who you were. They wouldn't judge who you were. And you didn't have to manipulate them to, you know, for trust. Those are the people that you cling to. And, you know, it's our first instinct to want to lie and deceive and to idealize who we are. Look, I'm not saying that I don't understand it. I am a Leo son, and so I don't give a crap what you think. I am who I am. If you don't like me, don't look at me. Um, and that's just, that's just a Leo son. Um, I do have a cancer, uh, I, I'm a Leo on the cusp of cancer. So there is a part of me that wants to be this people pleaser. But in the end, I think cancer is pretty oriented on their needs. And then the Leo is pretty oriented. So you know what, if you don't like me, I, I, I have to say that I have enough of an ego. I also have a moon in Aries. that it's just like, you don't like me, suck it is kind of my attitude and I know that that it's not an ideal but I'm very authentic I, I don't sell a I, I, I this package is who I am you know I'm theatrical I like to dress up I like to I don't know I like to I like to look like different people you know if you're in a relationship with me one night you may come home with a nurse and the next night you may come home with you know a sweet little angel like that is who I am I'm very theatrical and so that is why when you see me you see like I put on all these personifications and it may be hard to identify with who I am because I have a Gemini rising and they're very mutable and and so when I absorb energy, I absorb that that identity, essentially, because that's immutable clay. That's clay that, you know what, today I'm Gemini, um, but with this week, I was very Leo-oriented, Leo so I'm very flashy, I am primal, I am very sensual, I am very sexual, I am very... I'm just very raw. I'm very romantic. I'm very, you can see it. You can, I know you guys can feel it through these videos. It's because I've absorbed a tremendous amount of Leo vitality and spunk in this, in these messages. And, and it exudes out of me. It's like, um, it's like I, I engulf it. It's like I take it in, I swallow it, and then I become that energy. Um, and that's very Leo. Um, but it's also very Gemini rising because I can actually mold into that Leo personification very easily. Um, where some Leos may hide it, I actually don't. I am Leo. <laughs> so um, the reason I'm saying this is because today, the energy that pops to me the most and there's beautiful energy to talk about, but the but the energy that just jumps at me and I just I feel so so deeply is this Moon in Pisces, um, Queen Kungsting, this North Node in Libra, and then the Sun in Leo, um, Queen Kungsting, Neptune in Pisces, and it's not because I'm drawn to negativity because we both know I love to live in denial. It's because it, it's what pops to me. And, and I never, ex I can't really explain energy and why some speak to me and some don't. I have no understanding of it. 
I can tell you that. Um, so your sun in Leo today, the, 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 the predominant theme of today is going to be the sun in Leo quincunxing um, Pisces and Neptune. A moon in Pisces is very deep. It, it touches your unconscious levels. It, it touches the subconscious realms. It touches the areas in your 12th house that you don't know exist right and it, and it and it boils them up and it makes them surface and it makes us become conscious of the unconscious realms within us so i know that for the most part if i were to say if i were to define myself i would say oh i'm all leo lion i'm roar i am you know i have this aries moon and i persevere but if i really want to be serious about who i am i'm pretty mutable right and so um, I want to really emotionally identify with this mutable energy in me. And you guys need to, even if you don't have mutable energy in you, you need to understand that this moon is going to want you to be deeply conscious about what you subconsciously want. And it's going to have to do with your ascension process. So this is going to have to be about moving forward. Let's say that you have patterns in your life that are unbalanced, okay? There are coping methods in your life that you seek when you are upset that are addictive in nature, that are codependent in nature, um, that are an escapism quality in nature, and when these these powerful, intense emotions happen to you, you go into denial about them and you just either repress them, you shove them away in your 12th house and you put them in a little box and you don't ever um, open them up because they're very, they're too, in, they're too uh, intense for you to deal with. Understand the energy that speaks to me is this, this Neptune, um, I'm sorry, is this north node in Libra. We want to ascend. We're always, as creatures on this planet, always looking for ways to ascend. This is going to be a very deep reading, and I'm, I'm super sorry about it. <sighs> because it, it, I loved all the energy, survival energy and Leo energy, but I'm feeling wet energy. So I feel like I had all this fire energy and then somebody took a bucket of water and threw it on my fire and just and now I'm feeling the steam and that's kind of what I'm feeling right now and so when I'm feeling this energy I really want to talk to you about it because I think we need to balance that out you know it can't be the steam that just that makes these emotions more intensified um, we need to find a way to analytically look at them and balance them out and think about how they serve all that can be very difficult when you have water against Libra energy Libra energy is very balanced very disconnected it looks at you know it, it disconnects so that it can look at both sides of things but then and it can ascend right we can move up and forward but then we have all of this moon and Pisces energy that is making us dreamy and it's making us uh, you know think about things on it, it's honestly the raw core of who we are. If we were to dive deep and we were to dissect ourselves, if we were like a cadaver and we were to cut ourselves open, if we were to examine the mind and thoughts would spill out, that is where we would find that moon and Pisces type feeling. The other energy news that I'm picking up on and today that just seriously jump at me is the, the, the sun in Leo energy quincunxing um pisces and neptune i, I want to talk about that because we want that we have this leo core self-oriented wants us to shine wants us to be authentic but what we really need to do is face where our illusions are right and because neptune and pisces is in retrograde we need to exp we need to face where the illusions are that hold us back 
So if we're idealizing somebody and thinking, wow, this is the one for me. This is my soulmate. This is my twin flame. This is the one that I have been waiting for. This is my romantic partner. This is the one I'm going to persevere with. This is the one that plugs me in and, you know, or I have a, I have a, a creative endeavor and this is it. This is, this is the thing that's going to, you know, launch me to the top and make me stand out. I want you to make sure that you're not idealizing it. If you are not, this is when you're going to be experiencing these intense quincunxes throughout your day. So say you're in a relationship and you went into it and you said, you know what, I know that your past behavior has been this, but you told me you're going to do this and so I'm just going to believe you. I think you're going to get a reality check today. And that is so that you could push forward and ascend instead of getting caught up in past patterns that um, don't help you move forward. I want you to understand that the south node is your predisposed wiring, but your north node is your how you're ascending, how you're moving forward in the world. So if you are stuck in a past pattern, these quincunxes is going to give you a reality check and you're going to see something you probably don't want to see. I also, what's jumping out on this page is Uranus and Aries is going to be squaring off with the Mars and Cancer energy. Uranus and Aries is in retrograde. It is vulnerable today. Your ego is vulnerable. When you have Uranus and Aries in retrograde, it is not this ego-based oriented energy moving forward and driving yourself in an ego-based reaction. It is energy that want you to persevere forward, but you don't feel worthy. And you fall into poor coping methods because of it, because there's something you don't believe in yourself. You don't, you don't feel worthy. Something happened. Also, Uranus and Aries is, is scoring off with Pluto and Capricorn. Something's taken away your personal power, guys. Um, and it's based on a non-reality. You, you wanted to believe something you know, you thought something was going to happen. You know what? And you were wrong. And it is hard to face that. It's hard to face when you're wrong. It, 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 it's hard to face that, you know, you believed somebody when they said something. Or, you know what? It's, it's hard to face the fact that maybe, you know, you're never going to be a rock star. Okay? Or, you know what? You release your album and 10 people buy it and nobody else does. You know, it's, it's super hard to believe that that thing that you've been pouring your passion, your heart, your, your, your soul into is, it's actually not based on reality. It's not based on what's going to move you forward. What's going to make you ascend. What's going to make you move, um, up. Also today, Venus and Leo and Jupiter and Leo are, are going to be squaring off with Saturn. So karmic day. Absolutely. I want you to take a look at yourself, value yourself, value your ego, value what you're worth, okay? If you're settling for something because of past patterns that you keep having, you keep having these, these, these things that you do that, that, that pull away your power because you're, I don't know, fear, you're scared to be alone, you're scared to let go of something you're scared to let somebody else have something that you know that that means something to you um you don't have enough confidence that if you let it go it may come back to you um leo uh jupiter in leo is going to expand these fears it's going to expand these desires to have what you deserve what what you feel, um, look, if you're this person that is at this level, right? You're, you know, you're a corporate executive and you're, and you're dating a person who can't even freaking hold a job. Let's say, um, you know what? You're going to see that this week and you're going to be like, it's going to expand the fact that, you know what? I deserve, um, to have somebody that can hold a job and contribute and give me 50% of what I give them, you know, you're going to have that today. I think something could come up today that 
makes your your core self question what you authentically desire um and and i think it's going to be something that deeply resonates with you that is that you feel passionate about um and it's 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 karmic guys it's it's mars and cancer is going to be trying saturn and scorpio this is going to be something that evolves around home and family that idealized picture that you have in your head you're trying to start it almost with somebody that maybe doesn't fit your ideal picture if that's the case saturn's going to throw up an obstacle right it's not gonna it's not gonna like it's gonna square off um with these two with um venus and jupiter Say if you're one of those people that, you know what, you did all the work, your partners did all the work, you guys are rebuilding, and this Venus in retrograde energy is pulling forth some things, that you, these challenges that you have to do. You guys have signed up for counseling. You've signed up for all the things that it takes to get you forward. You've signed up for treatment plans. You want to deal with positive coping methods. You guys are no longer falling into um, those poor coping methods that were getting you by before. Then you're going to see a trine happen, and you're going to see some really positive energy you're going to see Saturn removing some obstacles and really really emotionally connecting you on a higher level this is a gore this has the potential to be a gorgeous day it has the I think for the majority of you, you're going to feel this on a very opposed quincunx squared level where you're going to have a lot of animosity and you're going to have a lot of things that come up I, I want to say that some of these things are going to come up that are emotion-based, that are going to strike you emotionally out of the blue, that are going to be sudden, and you are going to feel like you got sideswiped, and you're not going to understand why. This is also, um, be careful that this is not an ego-oriented day, and so if something really, really upsets you, and you're driving around, or you're working, that you could have sudden accidents because you are distracted emotionally, or overwrought emotionally, please be careful of that. Um, not good energy there. Um, and... You guys, um, Venus and Leo, Jupiter and Leo, and Mercury and Leo are all going to be opposing the Moon and Pisces and Neptune and Pisces. So spend a lot of time in introspection and spend a lot of time in meditation. Try to be as unconscious as you can today. Um, you know what? If you get 15 minutes of a break, go out to your car, sit out there, close your eyes, go into a little bit of a half sleep, and ask for messages to stay you know, please give me the messages that you want me to hear and just put your mind at peace. Do not let anything else enter and see what the universe reveals to you. See what visions you see. Um, I saw some visions last night that were, I, I got to say that they were super unpleasant, but confirmed what I had suspected. And um, I made peace with it. And I woke up today thinking I deserve more than that. So, um... There's power to be found in these intuitive um, visions that you will get in that half sleep realm um, that I always encourage people to go in when I see beautiful, mysterious energy. There is a lot of water energy. We've got Mars in Cancer. We've got Scorpio um, in Saturn in retrograde. And we have um, Mars. Um, I'm sorry, and we have the moon in Pisces, and we have Neptune in Pisces. Um, there's a lot of water energy intensifying everything, making it very emotional based. It's a very, um, there's a lot of energy in duality, in, you know, wanting to be a mutable person, but in the same sense, you know, um, you know, with all this Leo energy, it, it, you're starting to become a lot more authentic with what you want, even though you don't want to lose what you want. You want to become mutable to that situation so you don't lose it. I think that that's where you're going to become into all these squares and oppositions and quincunx and you're not going to know what's going on. That is all part of the Venus in retrograde process. It is testing the integrity of your relationship. Just think of your relationship like bending metal. It's going like this every day, all day long. And if you have a strong piece of metal, it'll last. And if you don't, it'll crack and break. And that is what, that's what's happening through this Venus retrograde. Um, 
Anyhow, guys, thank you so much for watching Annette's Astrology Corner. I look forward to talking to you guys again next week.